going on jerome's going on poppy so we're back taking a look at another mock draft ryan wilson cbs sports every single week it just like <sighs> brace yourself baby we're, we're going to go on a trip and the vikings end up taking at 14 a player that wasn't even the first round last week was in the first round the week before and i think he just forgot we'll, we'll get into it so there, there's not uh, as many trades actually i don't think there's any trades in this version there's like eight in the last one, but uh, there's some interesting picks. I think uh, some teams find some good value. So let's get this damn thing going. Uh, first up, again, I'm just waiting for it. Jaguars not taking Trevor Lawrence. It's going to be Ryan Wilson. I'm calling my shot by uh, April, by tax day, April 15th. Ryan Wilson will have Trevor Lawrence drop oh, like uh, a couple weeks before the draft. It's going to happen. Uh, Jets, too, uh, going to move on from San Darnold. That's been reported this week. So, Zach Wilson, come on in. No sacky for Zachy. Three, Dolphins stick and pick. This is a great spot to trade down for a team that wants the remaining big three quarterback or big four, as it were. Uh, so, Jamar Chase, wide receiver from LSU, going to play at that X. Chase, Devontae, Preston Williams. I like it. Wide receiver one for Tua. And you got to find out if Tua is going to be the guy. And you can do that by protecting him and then getting him as many weapons as possible. Protection comes later for the Dolphins. Four. So, I, I think that a lot of people are overthinking this. Where, all right, Falcons, you're up at four. You don't expect to be drafting in the top five anytime soon again. And you have a chance to bring in a quarterback with as much potential as Justin Fields, plus cream uh, on top. He is a local guy, so you can sell that angle to the fan base. Justin Fields, sit behind Matt Ryan for a year or two. Then go from there. I think that he can, uh, a lot of his problems can be worked out with Arthur Smith. And I, I still think that Fields does have a high ceiling. I, th I think that he really does. Five, Bengals, staying put. Apparently, they trade with themselves, but uh, Penny Sewell, no matter what, protect Joe Burrow, move Jonah Williams. There you go. Six. Wow. So last week, he had Mac Jones going 13. The Steelers traded up to go get him, but Mac Jones at six. Wow. And I, I understand the perspective from the Eagles side where, hey, in a vacuum, who is better? Mac Jones, Trey Lance, Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields if he's there. I get it, but man. Reversing course so many times, extending Wentz and then drafting Hurts in the second and then drafting quarterback at six. It just seems like you're panicking. But I know I, I guess what's the alternative? Stay put, sit on your hands, don't make changes. Uh, but Mac Jones, this is going to put a ton of expectations on his shoulders. And I don't know if he's ready for this because the Eagles O-line is in shambles besides Lane Johnson and whatever is left of Kelsey. They're probably going to get rid of Zach Ertz. And the receiving core beyond Jalen Rieger, Ah, like Travis Fulgham, like really in. So Mac Jones, for the first time ever, is going to have little talent on the offensive line and very little weapons on the outside besides Rieger. So boy, 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 boy. Seven. So if the Lions are really going to stick with Jared Goff, which I don't know, you could see them going Trey Lance at eight, uh, excuse me, at seven, uh, but they don't. So they get Jalen Waddle, that deep threat plus, and man. Man, man, man. Uh, so Waddle is a wide receiver two off the board. He goes before Devontae. I think that's actually a likelihood. If you can find a spot where you could, I don't know, put a jelly bean or two on it, I would bet on that. But Waddle, that deep threat presence, plus if they keep Baby Tron uh, potentially on the franchise tag, plus second year wide receiver Quintess Cephas coming out of Wisconsin, that is a damn good trio, man. That That is damn good. Not, not as good as Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and whoever. <laughs> that's the best wide receiver trio in the NFL. Eight. Panthers, so hashtag blessed. They don't have to trade up. They don't have to get their eyes gouged out by the Falcons. And they still get a quarterback, Trey Lance. And I think this is a, a great spot for him. I love this because he got Joe Brady, he got Matt Rule, who I think, even though he's a defensive guy, uh, he does understand quarterbacks. I think he's going to build a really good relationship with uh, Trey Lance in this spot. Uh, does have weapons, uh, can distribute, can make plays with his legs. And, man, that's a really good spot. I, I think overall, everyone except for Mac Jones are in a good spot. Yeah. Nine. So the Broncos miss out on all their quarterbacks. Maybe they soak her around uh, round two, round three. Get Jamie Newman or Kellen Mond. But Caleb Farley, cornerback one for Fangio, replacing A.J. Bouye, uh, getting him some toys on the way out. Ten. So you could go Sertan. I mean, that's been the near consensus pick. But Rashawn Slater in this spot, he might be too good to pass up. Now, I, I would not put him inside at guard. We've talked about this. I don't think he has the anchor to do that. And just because he's shorter and doesn't have long arms, that does not automatically mean that he's going to be a good guard. But he has proven that he can be a good tackle, even a right tackle, which he played the first couple of seasons uh, at Northwestern. So you have Tyron Smith back from injury at left tackle. You have Lyle Collins out at right tackle. But 
He played guard for his first couple seasons and played guard competently. So kick him back inside uh, opposite of Zach Martin, and then he got Slater. So that's a pretty damn good offensive line. And maybe they do sign Nick Barton, uh, Zach Martin's brother. So left to right, it'd be Tyron, it would be Lyle, it would be Nick Martin, Zach Martin, and then Rashawn Slater. Woo! Baby, you got a stew going. And then after Tyron, maybe you cut, maybe you trade him, and then move Slater over left tackle, which is natural position. Go get it. 11. So Waddle is off the board. Maybe they go Devontae Smith at, at this pick, but 11, they go Micah Parsons, where Gettleman does love size and speed in his front seven. Uh, and he does have both. Plus, he's got that length. And you can use him as a rusher. You can help fill in that gap that you uh, are missing now that Leonard Williams is likely out the door. Uh, play him at off-ball linebacker. Go get that. 12, Devontae Smith. So the Niners miss out on quarterback. So they're just like, ah, whatever. Whoever we end up at quarterback, maybe we'll get Teddy at at QB. We're just going to throw it and outscore everyone. So your wide receiver three, your three wideouts are Debo, Ayuk, and Devontae Smith. Plus you have George Kittle at tight end. (laughs) That's gross. That is gross. 13. Uh, So the Chargers, in a similar vein to the Niners, they're just like, yeah, whatever. So, uh... Rashawn Slater's off the board. Christian Derisaw would make a lot of sense here. Uh, I mean, they could go Patrick Sertan as well. They do have a need at cornerback, but they're just like, whatever. Hunter Henry played last year on the franchise tag. He's probably gone this year. So getting Kyle Pitts, really unfair. And if you have Kyle Pitts plus six foot eight backup tight end Donald Parham, the pride of Stetson, plus Keenan, plus Mike Williams, I mean, that is a basketball team, man. I love it. I love it. 14. So the Vikings taking Quiddy Pay. Now, last week, Quiddy Pay was outside of his first round, and I think he just forgot about him. And, and th- that will happen, man. It's like we're doing so many mock drafts and shifting things around. Some guys get lost. I, I don't think it was a demerit on Quiddy Pay. It certainly isn't. For me, he is the, the edge rusher one in this class, a physical freak, uh, a guy that can play the run. He's got good size as well as can rush from either side. So, yeah, I think in this spot, even though the Vikings traditionally have not drafted edge in the first or second round, I think this might be too much value to pass up. Uh, if given my druthers, well, Sertan the second would be tempting in terms of just BPA. Uh, Quidi Pay at this spot, Rousseau as well, uh, as well uh, plus Christian Derrissa, maybe even JC. Well, if Sertan is on board, I don't know. I don't know. Like Sertan and JC Horn are two different uh, cornerbacks stylistically. I would prefer Horn, but Patrick Sertain is just a really, really good player. Uh, plus, you could go Barrymore in the spot. Plus, you could go Morig, potentially. Uh, and then 15. So, the Patriots miss out on all the quarterbacks because Mac Jones with six. Uh, and getting Greg Rousseau. Rousseau, this would be a departure from what uh, Belichick has done in the front seven because Rousseau... I, I don't think he can be a stand-up outside linebacker, and he has been sticking with the 3-4 traditionally, uh, even though they have been a multiple front, and he does like size uh, up front. Rousseau doesn't really fit in uh, to being like a defensive end 5-tech in a 3-4. So uh, this would be, uh, again, departure, but talent is talent, and Rousseau can move all along that defensive front. Maybe that's what's appealing to Belichick and Patricia at this point. 16. So the let Patrick Peterson go. They bring in uh, Patrick Sertan the second. I don't expect him to fall this far, but you never know. Like I, if he's available at fourteen, I think the Vikings pick him. I, I think it's as simple as that. Seventeen, the Raiders uh, picking up Jeremiah Uusu Koromora, the joke, uh, the linebacker, safety, whatever coverage guy, amazing heat seeking missile. And if you're the Raiders, you got to play Travis Kelsey twice a year, and this is the Travis Kelsey eraser. Uh, it comes down to that. Eighteen. So like we said, you, you want to get the best look at Tua. You got him Jamar Chase at three. Now getting him some protection. Elijah Vera Tucker. Uh, now you can play him a tackle. I would think that he would be a better guard. So it, you have Austin Jackson, your first round pick out of USC last year at left tackle. And then Robert Hunt, uh, the pride of Louisiana, the, your second round pick, play him at right tackle. Put Tucker in, in one of the guard spots and go from... Uh, hell, Tucker might even be able to play center. Huh. A uh, 19... Washington definitely misses out on all the quarterbacks, but Kadarius Tony, uh, him and Scary Terry and Gibson, that's pretty gross. That that is pretty disgusting. Nice little weapons there for um, Taylor Heineke. Twenty. The Bears get Darisaw. This sucks. I hate it. I hate. I hate, hate it. If this happens, we riot. Yes. Twenty one. Uh, so the Colts miss out on Darisaw as well as AVT, but they also could address left tackle and free agency. Like maybe they signed Villanueva from the Steelers and cornerback. 
is definitely a need with Xavier Rhodes likely leaving a free agency. Uh, so J.C. Horn in the spot has a length uh, on the outside that you really like, especially in the AFC South. So uh, I think this is a nice little BPA play by Chris Ballard. He does it again. What a gangster. 22. Titans need edge. Jason Owe, physical freak. Him, Jeffrey Simmons, Harold Landry. Let's get it. 23. So the... You got your guy, Zach Wilson, at two. Getting him some weapons. Rondale Moore with Denzel Mims. Wow. Go get it. Top of the second round. Maybe get Etienne. Wow. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. 24. Uh, Boogie Basham goes to the Steelers. Now, this one, I don't really understand because you have Tuit and Hayward at defensive ends, and that's where Basham would likely slide in uh, if he went to the Steelers. And you know, Basham, he's... Athletically gifted, I don't think he can be an every down stand up outside linebacker, so he's not going to replace Bud Dupree in that sense. Like, I, if you're going to go edge in this spot, I would prefer Phillips. Uh, I would prefer Aziz or Joe Tryon in this spot. But Boogie, I actually like Boogie better than uh, all those guys except for Aziz. Uh, but specifically for the Steelers, nah. Nah, uh, 25 Barmore, uh, put him next to Devon Hamilton. Great, uh, two great defensive tackles uh, for Urban Meyer and company. 26. So safeties have been cracked. Trevor Morig as well as Grant Delp. Now, the one drawback is that they're both better at free safety. So there's a little bit too much crossover. Like they're much better as single high free safety. So now are you gonna play split safeties? Do you force one of them down in the box? I don't really know. Uh, like this would make more sense. If, uh, you know, the Browns circled around, say, in the third round and got Ardarius Washington, uh, his uh, Morgs teammate at TCU. So then you could have Washington down in the box, you know, being that Honey Badger, Bob Sanders 2.0 type guy. Uh, but if this is the route they go, sure. Uh, 27, Jalen Phillips. Eric DaCosta, how does he keep getting away with this? So they uh, are going to let Matt Judon walk all likelihood. He played last year in the franchise tag. I need the freaking Gakwe who they traded for. Probably going to leave free agency as well. And then they get Jalen Phillips, heavy hands, getting after it on the edge. How dare they? 28. So the Saints taking Tyson Campbell. Now, I do like Tyson Campbell, but this is sort of perplexing for the Saints where they do have Lattimore. They got Janoris Jenkins. They got Robinson. So linebacker, edge, wide receiver, quarterback, much more pressing needs. Yeah, that's not even BPA at this stage, but 29. So this is a bit surprising. It's not a cornerback. It's not a wide receiver for Green Bay. It's not a linebacker, but Levi Muzariki. I actually like it. Because it's a smart pick. So then, therefore, I hate it because it's the Packers. And he could replace Lancaster or Lowry. He could play all along that defensive line. He could play one tech, three tech, five tech. He can uh, potentially even be a stand up outside. Line. Well, not an every down stand up outside guy. But if you want to put him, uh, pending what happens with Preston Smith, but opposite of Zadarius Smith in certain packages, sure. But wow, this sucks because I really like on Wizariki. Now I have to hate him with the Fury of a Thousand Suns. 30, Zayvon Collins going to the Bills, uh, replacing Matt Milano if he leaves in all likelihood. 31, Aziz, where you know a lot has been made about the Chiefs offensive line, except they do get a lot of guys back. They get the doctor guard back, uh, who's a 20 toy opt out. They get Fisher and Schwartz back from injury. So, yeah. Uh, but Aziz replacing Tano Passano. Aziz opposite of Frank Clark. A nice duo. Uh, and then 32, Joe Tryon coming in from Washington, uh, replacing Shaq Barrett if he leaves in free agency. Uh, dude's still on the board, Kyle Trask. I thought that teams, especially since all the quarterbacks were gone early on, they may, may reach for a quarterback, but they didn't end up doing it. No running backs go in the first round. Uh, Najee Harris and Travis Etienne still on board. Wide receivers, uh, Marshall Moore, Bateman still there. Fryermuth still on board. O-line, Leatherwood, Jenkins, Cosby, Mayfield, Dickerson, White Davis, no matter what, still there. Defensively, Joseph Asai, basically the only edge rusher didn't get taken, but someone's going to get great value at the top of the second round. Davin Nixon, no go. Uh, Dylan Moses, Nick Bolton, no. Newsom, Asante Samuel, Jevon Holland, uh, no go either. So if this is how it went down for the Vikings and they end up with Quiddy Pay at 14, like we said, don't overthink it. I, I do think that Quiddy Pay might be one of the more overlooked prospects in the draft. Him and Christian Derrissa, I, I don't really understand why people are sleeping on them so much. So if this happens, uh, again, it would be against um, uh, against what the Vikings have done in recent years uh, under Spielman. But, hey, Quiddy Pay, Daniil Hunter, let's go. Let's go. Uh, but your thoughts, uh, Ryan Harris's, uh, sorry, Ryan Wilson's uh, latest mock draft lesson in the comment section below. Subscribe for Daily Vikings Takes. We'll support that work. Put some in Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.